All right, hey, organic chemistry. To help you review for the quiz today, I made this quick review that encompasses everything that we should have learned from my previous video notes and lectures. So you're gonna get three different questions on your quiz today. One of them is gonna ask you about drawing isomers and then naming them. So that goes back to the previous unit. Another one is gonna be identifying whether the pair of isomers or the pair of structures here are in fact isomers and explaining why. And then another question is gonna ask you to draw chair conformations and then tell me which position, axial or equatorial, um, the substituents on the cyclohexane are. So let's get started. So question number one, and this is just a sample question and it's gonna be very similar to what you're getting, says draw and name four constitutional isomers that have the formula C8H18. So I'm not asking you to draw all of them, I'm just asking you to draw four of them. The easiest one to draw would probably be a straight chain of eight carbons. So C8H18, and I'm gonna give the, you this on your quiz, um, is definitely an alkane. How do I know that? It follows the 2N um, plus two rule with the hydrogens. Remember CNH2N plus two means alkane. If it was CNH2N, that would be alkene. So alkane means I'm gonna have all single bonds. So I'm not gonna have to worry about double bonds or rings or anything like that. All right, so let's do a straight chain of eight carbons. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Straight chain of eight carbons, 18 hydrogens, we call that octane. Okay, now let's make an isomer. There are so many different ones that you can make, but you just have to choose to make four or three more now after the straight chain. So what's always good to do is if you take this end group here, this is a methyl group, by the way, this is a CH3. If I take this CH3 and I switch places with anything on the inside, I can get an isomer. Remember, an isomer or a constitutional isomer has the same molecular formula, same molecular formula, it's just connected differently. So I'm gonna move the CH3 somewhere on the inside. Let's move it on like this fourth carbon, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna do here, I have the CH3 now. And now that I have a CH3 up there, I have to put the rest of the carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight carbons. But now if I wanna name this, don't forget how to name, you have to find your longest chain, right? So the name, we need the longest chain. And then you just gotta name the substituents. And the substituents that we did was just a methyl group. So my longest chain, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is seven carbons, all single bonds. My parent name is gonna be heptane. Seven carbons, all single bonds. Heptane, and you could use your nomenclature notes if you need help with that. And then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, doesn't matter which way I go. On my fourth carbon, I have a methyl group. So this is gonna be four methyl heptane, okay? Now if I want to, I could just move that methyl group again. Doesn't matter. I could just move this methyl group and rotate it and make it switch places with an inside carbon. I'll put it here now on the third carbon and continue to the rest of the chain. This is still gonna give me a parent chain of seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm still gonna get heptane, but now instead of the methyl group being on the fourth carbon, now it's on the one, two, third carbon. So this is three methyl heptane. And then again, if I want to, I could just move that methyl group inside or I could do something funkier, and I'm gonna do something funkier just in case if you wanna get a little bit more creative. I could move another N-methyl group on the inside somewhere. I could make it trade places with a hydrogen that's here. So let's do that. I'm gonna move a methyl group on the inside. I'm gonna keep the CH3 here. I'm gonna put a methyl group here. And then there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I still have eight carbons. 
But my longest chain, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, is six carbons. So that gives me hexane. Now, you have many different options here, so don't freak out. Don't be like, oh my goodness, how do I know to do that? You don't. You just decide on making different structures by moving carbons on the inside, on the outside to the inside. And so now if I want to number and name this, I'm going to probably have this be smallest numbers. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be two and three, two and four, two, four, dimethyl hexane. Do not forget our rules of naming, but I did dimethyl because there's two methyl groups. So you say di, if there were three methyl groups, you would say tri. And then two, four, because it's on the second and fourth carbon. So that's just an example of drawing different isomers for something that is C8H18. The next question that you're going to get is, now if I give you a set of structures, tell me whether or not they are constitutional isomers. So for in order for it to be a constitutional isomer, it has to be the same molecular formula, just connected physically differently. Now, I know that doesn't make grammatical sense, but who cares? Okay? So I have to have, like I had up here, I moved a methyl group somewhere else. If I had just rotated this structure and still had the methyl group on the fourth carbon, but like looking, if I flipped it, it would be the same structure. It would not be a constitutional isomer. Okay, so let's look at our first example here. Let's get our molecular formula. It's got one, two, three, four, five carbons. One, two, three, four. They both have five carbons. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 hydrogens, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Don't forget how I'm counting carbons and hydrogens. That's an old rule. And then I have a Cl. So both of these have the same molecular formula. So they're going to be isomers. Okay, They have the same molecular formula. I'm going to say yes. And nothing is really connected differently. right? On my second carbon, I have a chlorine and a hydrogen, a chlorine and a hydrogen. The only thing that's different is that there's this wedge here and there's this dash here. The chlorine is wedged here. The chlorine is dashed here. That just means it's coming towards or away from you. Wedge means towards you. Dash means away from you. But does that mean that it's connected on different atoms? No. This chlorine is still on carbon 2. Cl on carbon 2. Cl on carbon 2. So are these two constitutional isomers? I know I was saying yes before. Well, they have the same molecular formula, and they're actually connected in the same way. So I'm going to say no. Connected in the same way. Right? All of my atoms are connected in the same exact way as they are on the left side and the right side. The only thing different is the chlorine is forward or back. That doesn't make it a constitutional isomer. Okay? All right, next question. All right, both of these, if I look at these two, six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens, BrCl, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens, BrCl. They have the same molecular formula, so they could be, they might be isomers. Are they connected differently? Well, there's a Br1, 2, 3, 1 to 4 position away from a Cl. There's a Br1 to 2 away from the Cl. So are they constitutional isomers? Yes. Same molecular formula, but connected differently. So you're going to have to do something like this on your quiz today. So these are connected differently. This bromine and chlorine are not on the same carbons as they are before and after here. So that means this is an isomer. They have the same molecular formula, but this Br and Cl are one, in, are one away from each other. This Br and Cl are one and four away from each other. And then now we're going to the last one. Let's get a molecular formula for both of them. So notice what I'm doing. I'm getting the molecular formula, seeing if it looks like they're just connected differently. And if they are constitutional isomers. If not, not isomers. All right, so let's get this first one. This one has six carbons. 
One, two, three, four, five. This also has six carbons. This has three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This has twelve hydrogens. This has three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hydrogens. They do not have the same molecular formula. Are these isomers? No. Do not have same molecular formula. So I have two different no's here. I have no's if they are the same molecular formula and they're connected in the same way, and no if they are not having the same molecular formula at all, okay? All right, now let's look at the back question. I'm only going to do one or two of them, but it kind of gets the ball rolling, okay? Maybe if I have enough time in the video, I'll do the third one. All right, so this last one, this is just like from your last worksheet video on drawing chair conformations. I want you to draw the chair conformation for this cyclohexane structure, and then tell me what positions the assigned groups or substituents are. So let's start. I always like to start by drawing the chair. So I like to draw two off-sided parallel lines and then those triangles, and then boom. Kind of looks like a weird bow tie, but it's known as the chair. And then what I like to do to make things simple is put my axials and then my equatorials. So I do axial straight up, equatorial straight down. Axial straight up, equatorial straight down. Axial straight up, equ um, axial straight down. Sorry, they should be alternating axials. I think I said ex equatorial accidentally. So axial up, axial down. Axial up, axial down. Axial up, axial down. They should always be alternating. Then, if I have an axial up on this carbon, let's call this one, two, three, four, five, six. If I have an axial up, that means I must have an equatorial down. If this equatorial is down, my next equatorial is going to be up. Then equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up. I have put all of my axial and equatorial positions on, and now it's just easy to plug and plug and put my in, um, groups on. I'm going to number it, doesn't matter how, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Doesn't matter how you number them, as long as you are consistent with where you're putting your groups. On my first carbon, or carbon number one, according to me, I'm going to have to have a CH3 down. Remember, the wedge means down. So I need a CH3 down. So on my first carbon, the only, my wedge being down, CH3 has to be on an equatorial position. So my dashed, oh, sorry, my bad. You're probably like, what? Mr. T, I thought you said that was a, 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 a dashed. Sorry, this is a dashed. Dash means down. This, this does mean down. I just accidentally named it wrong. So this is a dash. My dash needs to be down. And so now my down position is going to be CH3. So dash CH3 is equatorial. And that's what I put here. And then 2, 3, 4, 2, 3. On my fourth position, I need my CH3 to be up. This is a wedge. This is a wedge. And a wedge means up. So on my fourth position here, 1, 4, the only way I could get up is if it was also equatorial. So wedged up is going to be equatorial. And that is how you are doing the question. Let's do the next one. I'll draw my chair. I'll draw it the other way this time. Okay. Straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up. All right. You should know how to do that from my previous... Um, example. Okay? Doesn't matter how you number it. One, two, three, four, five, six. You are not naming this. If I was to name this, I would probably number it maybe a little bit differently, but I'm just numbering it like this arbitrarily. All right? Now, one, I need my chlorine down or wedged. So on my first carbon, the only way I'm able to get down is if it's equatorial. So CL is equatorial. Um, then on my third carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, doesn't matter. I just numbered it arbitrarily this way. On my third carbon, I need my BR up. Damn it. Why do I keep on saying down wedge? Down dash. Sorry. Up 
wedge. Okay. All right, so my BR needs to be up on my third carbon. So third, the only way I could get it up is if BR was axial. The only way I could get up with wedge is axial. And then finally, on my fourth carbon, I need another up for CH3, up wedge. I'm not going to make that mistake again. The only way I could get up on my fourth carbon is equatorial. Okay. Let me end this video on doing this last one and not having any mistakes in recognizing or identifying wedges and dash. Again, I'll make a note so you know how to recognize it. If it's completely shaded, we call this wedge, and that's up. Sometimes it's known as being towards you. If I have dotted line, we call that dashed. That's down or sometimes away from you, okay? All right, so now let's draw my chair, okay? I'll draw it like... I didn't draw it like this yet. I'll do it a different way. All right, doesn't matter how pretty, all right? I'll do straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Um, if this is up, that means act angled or equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up, sorry, that doesn't really look like equatorial. Equatorial down, equatorial up, okay? That's equatorial. I'm not looking for pretty here, okay? All right, and now I'll just number it one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? I'll number this, doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five, six. You just gotta be consistent. All right, on my second carbon, I have, and I'm gonna call it right, a wedge up of the CH2, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, this is known as a propyl group, if you remember. I need that to be up on my second carbon. So in order for that to happen, my second carbon up is equatorial. So this is equatorial. For my next group, on my fourth carbon, I have an OH dashed or down. And the only way I could get OH to go down is if it was axial. Okay. And then finally, for my last one, on my sixth carbon, which is over here, all right, this is axial down, equatorial. It doesn't really look like it. It should be equatorial up. Okay. The only way I could get, I need this to be up, which is wedged, right? I need NH2 up. The only way I could get NH2 up is if it was equatorial. And that is how I want you to answer the question like this that's going to be on your quiz. Okay? So, in conclusion, to do questions like this, you should draw the chair, do your alternating axials up and down, do your alternating equatorials up and down. On the same carbon, your axial and equatorial are going to be in opposite directions. Don't forget that. And then you should number your cyclohexane, does not matter, and then be consistent where you are putting groups. And at the end, you can identify where they are, either equatorial or axial.